Thank you for that. Our, our next presenter today, Dylan Pranger, is our first virtual pre presenter, um, 2012 BS Arc. Uh, Dylan Pranger is an architect, designer, and fabricator whose work lies in sustainable building materials and construction techniques. He is co-editor of The Architecture Waste, Design for a Circular Economy, a publication that questions the traditional role of the architect and challenges the discipline to address urgent material issues within the larger design process. He is a licensed architect and principal of ODP, the office of Dylan Pranger. That sounds like favoritism to me, Dylan, but an, an architecture and design practice whose work focuses on small project types that respond to the local context and materials through des the design build practice model. Uh, Dylan, you have the stage. Yeah, thank, thank you, Brian, for the introduction. I assume everyone can hear me okay? Yeah. See here. So, uh, yeah, as mentioned, this has uh, come out of the past four years. I've co-taught an architectural design course at, at Cornell through the lens of waste uh, materials and architecture and closed loop resources, which focus on rethinking the design process and this notion of the circular economy. Um, the courses is made out of my own personal research and the publication Brian mentioned, uh, The Architecture of Waste Design for Circular Economy, uh, which provides this hopeful outlook through examining our current recycling practices, rethinking initial manufacturing techniques, and proposing design solutions for second life material objects. <clears throat> so just to put this into context uh, a bit for all of us and right, what, what an experiential design means or how we experience waste uh, in, in every day, Right, we as humans are designed for consumption, and our industry, being architecture and construction, is is even worse. Um, the built environment consumes massive amounts of materials, and materials that are largely unable to be recycled. As we look at this chart, which is now outdated by more than 15 years, it's only getting worse um, as, as we go on. To put this into context, and all too familiar. Uh, material to us as architects, concrete is being consumed at an alarming rate. China currently produces and consumes about 60% of the world's cement and in the past decade has outpaced what the U.S. has consumed in the past 100 years. If we continue at this rate, China alone will consume 217.8 gigatons of concrete between now and 2110. These issues of consumption extend beyond concrete and construction materials to affect other areas in the environment. In the case of concrete, it begins to distress the total volume of sand available in the world. If you haven't seen of or heard uh, of the uh, documentary Sand Wars by Dennis Delastrap, uh, which exposes the global underworld of importing, exporting, illegal mining of beaches uh, for sand around the globe. I definitely encourage you to, to look at it. Um, at the current rate of mining, it's only estimated that a finite amount of raw materials remain in the Earth's crust, which means we'll see the end of many of these materials within our lifetimes. We will soon need to find alternative solutions to this acute problem of global consumption and disposal. In addition to our habit of consumption, which isn't really a problem, but the real issue lies in the massive amount of waste, which is ingrained into our culture. This idea of take, make, and discard is prevalent in the way we consume meals on the go, planned obsolescence through technology, and so on. Looking at the global waste, you can see areas such as North America, Russia, parts of Europe, mostly developed countries, produce greater than 3.3 pounds per day, or excuse me, per capita, um, compared to underdeveloped countries uh, that produce only a fraction of that. So just to quickly put that into quantifiable terms, the chart on the left represents general municipal solid waste per pounds per person per day in the US, which is four and a half pounds. Uh, but that doesn't consider recycling. Out of that four and a half pounds per person, 34.6 is recycled, which is a start that still leaves us with an alarming amount of waste. Approximately 327 million people in the US makes for over 500,000 tons of waste being sent to the landfill every single day. Right. To make matters worse, uh, we as architects and builders have a special category reserved for us in terms of waste generation, construction and demolition waste, or CAD waste, as you might have heard it uh, called. When compared to municipal solid waste, construction demolition waste generation is double that of the average consumer. So we are the greatest cause of waste debris uh, per industry and outproduce everyone else by land shot. Given right, a piece of concrete was a little bit more than a banana peel, but um, it's still a, a big issue. Right, and not to, not to paint such a bleak picture, but the good news is we can solve this through design and sustainable ways of thinking, or at least I'm hopeful of that. However, this requires us to move beyond 
the simple idea of reduce, reuse, and recycle and rethink the ways our material are designed, manufactured, used, repaired, and returned. This requires us to rethink the traditional methods of design and construction and even question the role of the architect. So this brings me to, to part two. Um, what are these objects that uh, we, we looked at through the studio? And if I had to trace it back uh, to a point of origin, the topic really manifests itself after questioning an exhibition on New York City's zero waste plan. Here we see a beautiful graphic that was produced as part of the exhibition, uh, which, which is great, uh, looks beautiful. Uh, but if we take a closer look in the bottom right corner, there's still 1,121 tons of refuse produced uh, a day, right? Should this be zero? After all, for a zero waste plan, um, there, there shouldn't be any waste. So this was really interesting uh, and began to spark this question of where does it go? What happens to it? Why is it still considered waste? Um, but how can it be considered an opportunity instead of a waste? Uh, and we began to break it down even further, uh, looking at each category of recycling. Why is there a portion that's still being diverted to the landfill um, and when it has the capability of being recycled? Investigating the typical journey of recycling plastic really became quite fascinating. Um, we discovered that this path is actually more like a pilgrimage in certain instances, um, due largely to local or state policies, waste is transferred, exchanged, swapped with other states, and even countries to either skirt regulations or simply pad the numbers. So if you look here, right, uh, Massachusetts, Illinois has exceptional uh, recycling rates, but they also import a massive amount of material from their surrounding states in order to, to pad those numbers. Uh, when you look at the sort of global picture, it became really interesting. Uh, right, and finally we reach the end of the line, which in all its glory looks something like this, uh, a, a MRF or a material recovery facility. The MRF incorporates a quite sophisticated series of devices to automate the sorting process. Um, everything has shifted to st single stream sorting nowadays in terms of municipal solid waste, right? You throw all your glass plastic paper into one bin and this machine sorts it all out for you. Um, and it uses a whole bunch of sophisticated devices such as air jets, magnets, optical sensors, uh, and, and the like, right? And this is the ideal outcome, right? You get a nice neatly bundled recyclable package um, that, that, that's packed into a bale, sent off to be returned to the proper, proper material stream for another life cycle. Um, but going back to those flow charts uh, that were in blue earlier, this was the part of the MRF um, was the point we came most inter interested in, the physical point where items become quite literally separated and diverted to the waste stream, or in this case, the trash can in between those two gentlemen. Um, the process is still a bit ambiguous to us, right? These facilities were never willing to disclose exactly how much or what is getting sorted, but they did give us uh, a few fair examples, such as tanglers, hoses, cables, cords that get caught in their system um, and will just disrupt the machine and sensors and conveyors. Um, this is the point where each student in the course began to discover very specific items that were being mishandled at various points in their journey through the recycling process. Um, enter our, our very merry band of misused materials. Each one of these items can be recycled, uh, but it's failing to be properly handled at some point in the system. These objects became a point of design exploration in testing architecture's capability to adapt and solve a whole new set of problems. Each of them a new material ripe with potential, just in need for a different frame of thinking applied to them. All right, why can't a plastic bag be beautiful or become a new type of tension cable when reconfigured as you see in the top right. The goal of the research and coursework is not just to reuse or repurpose waste, but through the use in a pavilion to render the material object recyclable within a single stream MRF system. Uh, this involved a process of somehow reconfiguring, disassembling, or transforming the discarded object through the design process. And this is really where the students began to um, introduce their um, design potential to it. So I'll give just two quick case studies and you can go and, and look at the rest um, or happily reach out to me. Um, the first one looking at one thing that we deal with every day, right? The, the coffee cup. Um, 58 billion paper cups are landfilled globally per year, 99% um, of which is high quality uh, virgin paper fibers that can be recycled. But the issue becomes this sort of composite nature of the plastic liner on the inside and then the paper on, on the outside. The student began to look at how to disassemble these two things to end Enter them into their own proper recycling streams. Um, and then also looking at their uh, aesthetic qualities, both from an architectural perspective, the waterproofing nature of the plastic liner, and then the beautiful texture of the, the exterior here. She worked with a local uh, 
coffee company that has a red logo. So you get this sort of pink hue when she repulped the paper. Uh, and then the second uh, option was, or second example is looking at single use uh, plastic cutlery. So every day, 8 million new solid waste items become marine litter in oceans and seas, which is a massive amount of material, um, right? Uh, the student began to look at ways to reconfigure these so they actually become more aggregates that can become recycled, but actually began to question uh, really the necessity of single use plastics. And is there a way to actually go all the way back? So not just work with the material and its formal properties itself, but to the point of manufacturing design and say, is there a better way to design this process? Uh, and in this case, she looked at actually designing a foam case that could carry your own uh, set of cutlery with you, right? You use it during the day, you bring it home at night, you wash it and think of eliminating this problem at the point of its sort of inception, as opposed to just dealing with an issue down the line. Uh, and this is where I will leave you all for the moment. Thanks so much. Thank you for that, Dylan. Uh, my niece actually worked in a MRF, so I was as excited to see something that I knew a little bit about. But thank you for sharing that. Um, and I hope you heard the applause in the room, because that's part of the fun here. So